Hey everybody, this is Dylan with Bible A to Z. So the book of Genesis is divided into two main sections. You have chapters 1 through 11 and chapters 12 through 50. Chapters 1 through 11, you have creation, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the uh, Noah's Ark and the flood, and the Tower of Babel. And then from chapter 12 onward, you have the focus on one family, that's Abraham's family, and then it goes into Isaac and Jacob and, and all of that. And But what's interesting is then even after Genesis chapter 12, from Genesis 12 through the end of the Bible, the entire focus is either on Abraham's specific family or those who are pointing to his family. So Jesus would come from the line of Abraham. And so Old Testament and New Testament is essentially all about this lineage that began with Abraham. Now, we don't necessarily get this when we are reading in our Bibles. We don't necessarily think of it. But the first 11 chapters of Genesis cover approximately 2,000 years. The rest of the entire chapters and books of the Bible afterwards, so from Genesis 12 through the end of the book of Revelation, is around 2,000 years. So the first 11 chapters, 2,000 years, and then from chapter 12 of Genesis onward is 2,000 years. Um, so there's a huge split after chapter 11 um, in the Bible. So in this passage, we see that the family of Abraham, so his two brothers, his father Terah, his wife Sarai, who would become Sarah, all of them head toward Canaan. So they go from Ur of the Chaldeans to Canaan. And what's interesting about this is this is a westward move, which kind of symbolizes a move closer toward God. In the book of Genesis, we see up to this point that the east had been kind of the symbol of being further from God and moving away from him. Like whenever they were banished from the Garden of Eden, uh, it says that there was an angel on the east side of the garden to bar them from getting back inside. Um, whenever Cain killed his brother Abel and was cast out, it said that he would be uh, have to go east of Eden. And so we see that east was kind of in this point the symbol of being further away from God, whereas in this point with Abraham and his family, they are going toward Canaan, which is a westward move, the first westward move that we see in Genesis as a symbol of their closeness to God, or at the very least seeking to go closer to God. Now, it is worth pointing out that whenever they are going here, they are going at the command of the Lord. So the opening verses of chapter 12 are important, not only for the chapter, but also for the book and even for the Bible. Um, it says this, The Lord said to Abram, Go out from your land, your relatives, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So this is oftentimes used as a point of saying that if you bless the nation of Israel, that God will bless you, either as an individual or as a nation. If you do something bad to the nation of Israel, that God will hurt you as an individual or hurt you as a nation. Um, now, for starters, the current day nation of Israel Many people would see that as a distinction from the Old Testament version of Israel because it was set up by the United Nations, which are a godless um, institution. But beyond that, you also have to keep in mind that in this passage, God is talking to Abraham the individual, and he says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the peoples of on earth will be blessed through you. So this is not just talking about a large group. It seems to be speaking specifically to the individual Abraham. And so with this, that might change the way some people interpret the passage if they are seeing this as being a large group or the entire nation of Israel instead of the individual of Abraham here, which I believe that that's what it is speaking of. The Lord said to Abram, Go out from your land, your relatives, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. So God is now calling on Abraham or Abram at this point to go to the land that he will show him. So this is an act of obedience and faith on the part of Abram to go where God is leading. 
Now, they had initially started this journey before maybe having a full view of what God was wanting, but now God will begin to disclose himself even more to Abraham and to his family in the coming weeks, months, and years ahead of this. So God promises to make Abram's name great and um, bless him as an individual, but it says, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. How is this happening? How did this happen? It's very simple. Through Abraham came Jesus Christ, and he's saying all the peoples on earth will be blessed through the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, so that all who are united with Jesus are now blessed and have eternal life through him. And so although Abraham might not have known all of this at the time, we can see looking back that this is a prophecy of the coming Messiah, all people will be blessed through him. And Paul makes it clear in Galatians that this is not just speaking to uh, the nation or to a huge group, but it's speaking to of Christ and all those who are united with Christ are now uh, been brought into the fold with him. So it says this in Galatians 3.16, Now the promises were not spoken to Abraham and to his seed, He does not say and to seeds as though referring to many, but referring to one and to your seed who is Christ. Then it goes on to say this in verses 28 and 29 of chapter 3 of Galatians. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female, since you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. So if you are trusting in Jesus Christ, you are now Abraham's seed. This is applying to you in the first few verses of chapter 12 of Genesis that all those who are united with Christ have been blessed because of what he has done for them. This was an act of obedience on Abraham's part. He didn't just randomly go, but it tells us why he went, and it's because God told him to go to this land, to leave where he had known, where he was comfortable from your land, your relatives and your father's house to the land that God would show him. So he was taking a huge leap of faith by basically leaving behind his old ways, the pagan lands that he had come accustomed to and to go to the land that God would show him. And this is a great mark of faith. And this is spoken of, you know, his faith is shown in chapter 11 of Hebrews. It says this by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, co-heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God." So from the very start, Abraham's eyes were on God and were on heaven and not on the temporal things of this life that quickly pass away. His focus was, I want to be obedient to God. And if that means leaving behind some of my earthly possessions and wealth, then so be it. I want to go where God would lead. And that's exactly what he did. And God blessed him as a result of that. So Abram was willing to go even though the easy thing to do The thing that I'm sure most of his family would say to do is, hey, stay here. You know, you can worship God where you're at, even though they were a pagan nation anyways. But the fact is, is it wasn't just the fact that this land is somehow holier than the land 20 miles or 100 miles away. It was the fact that when God calls us to do something, we have to be obedient, regardless how much sense it seems to make to us. We need to understand that God, if he's telling us to do something as the creator of the universe. He has a purpose and a plan behind it. And if for no other reason, it should be because we want to be obedient to him. So Abram was wanting to obey God because he knew that the treasures that were in store for him in the life to come would be far greater than whatever things he might be leaving behind in this earth. And for us as well, when God calls us We should not hesitate, knowing that he has what is best for us all the time. So it says this then in verse 7, The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. 
From there he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. He built an altar to the Lord there, and he called on the name of the Lord. So Abram left his comforts, his home, his wealth, and he comes to this foreign land. And once he's there, he builds this altar to the Lord. And so he was taking his faith in God with him wherever he went. And that's a great application for us as well. It doesn't matter where we go, who we encounter, what we see. Our faith needs to go with us, and we won't necessarily be building a physical altar, but our lives should be the temple of the Holy Spirit. And with that, wherever we go, we should make Christ known in our words and in our actions. Otherwise, we are failing to do what God would call us to do. So it might look different for each of us, but we should be like Abraham was in this situation where his first act in this foreign new land was to build an altar to the Lord. And, you know, God had told Abram that he would make his name great. But Abram here, once he he is in this land, he is now wanting to honor the name of the Lord. And for us, no matter what type of uh, accomplishments or anything come our way, our focus should always be on lifting up Christ and not upon ourselves. So this is just a quick overview of Abram and his family entering into the promised land and the call of God to Abram and how Abram responded But the neatest thing is for me is that in verse 3, when it says all the peoples on earth will be blessed through Abraham, that happened through Jesus Christ. All people are blessed through the coming of the Messiah who loved us and gave himself for us. So until until next time, see you then.